Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jen Rosenbaum, breast cancer survivor, author, and photographer. And I'm very happy that you're here today. Today, I want to talk to you guys about ovaries. I have a little guest with me today. <laughs> Hopefully, he's uh, he'll behave. Okay, so... You guys, I had breast cancer when I was 41 years old. I'm sure um, so many of you know the story, but just to give a little synopsis in case you don't know, I was diagnosed at 41, stage 2B, invasive lobular carcinoma. I had bilateral mastectomies, eight rounds of chemotherapy, four reconstruction surgeries, and now I am considering taking out my ovaries. Why, you may ask. Well, let me explain. First of all, um, I do not have any higher risk of having ovarian cancer than the rest of the population. So generally speaking, um, it is not recommended for somebody like me to have their ovaries out. But I'm in a little bit of a different position and I'll explain. Before I go on to that, I do wanna tell you, by the way, that this video is not meant to be medical advice. I am not a doctor and I cannot give you medical advice. So you should ask your doctor about any questions you might have. I am just explaining things as I know them from a patient point of view. And if I am wrong about something, please let me know. But this is my experience. Okay, so. I went to my gynecologist, and this is probably the fourth or fifth time I've gone to the gynecologist to talk to her about having my ovaries removed. Um, and we've gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but I've decided it's time for me to make a decision, and, and I will tell you why. So I am on tamoxifen. My breast cancer was uh, hormone positive, which means it feeds off of hormones. So when that happens, they put you on some sort of medication. It doesn't have to be tamoxifen. There's different versions depending if you're menopausal, premenopausal, that basically block the cells, the estrogen from getting to the cells. So for example, if this is a cell, it's like Pac-Man and it's hungry and it's eating the estrogen, right? What happens is when you take tamoxifen, it blocks that. It doesn't allow the cell to eat the estrogen. So in theory, it will not grow or not survive because it's, it doesn't have any food. So we, uh, a lot of us take tamoxifen to prevent that. So in addition to tamoxifen, sometimes people get what's called Lupron. It's in a shot. If you've ever been through infertility or whatnot, you might be familiar with Lupron. It's used for a lot of different reasons. But for me, in my scenario, it was used to shut down my ovaries, also known as putting me into medical menopause. So it, it shuts down my ovaries. I stopped getting a period and I am basically going through menopause. I guess it takes some time. It's been three, almost three years already that I'm on Lupron. Um, and so the Lupron, I used to get the shots every month and now I get them every three months. And so I get a three month dose every three months and the Lupron basically shuts down the ovary. So what that does is it stops estrogen production, which allows the tamoxifen to not have to work so hard because there's not as much estrogen for it to block from the cells. I hope this is making sense. Again, I'm not a doctor, nor I am a teacher, so nor am I a teacher, so hopefully this is all making sense. So now that my body's making less estrogen and my tamoxifen doesn't have to work so hard and the, the cells don't, the cancer cells, God forbid there's cancer cells in the body, but if there were, they have nothing to eat, hopefully everything is good in the body. Now, Here's the downside. It sounds wonderful, right? But here's the downside. The downside is that the Lupron, first of all, it's annoying to go every three months or every month, especially for the shots. The second thing is that the Lupron, for me, causes a lot of bone pain at times. So I have trouble at times um, bending my fingers, opening jars, holding my camera, typing on the computer, holding my phone. And it's not just my fingers, but I, I think I feel it there the most because obviously I'm the most active with my hands, but I feel it in my wrists, I feel it in my knees, my hips, and all the bones in my feet. Sometimes it's hard to walk. So that's difficult. Um, it can also cause a lot of other things, right? Hot flashes, mood swings, all of the menopausal symptoms that women typically get throughout menopause. I am definitely having all of them. <laughs> so the protocol is for somebody like me to be on Lupron for five years and then come off of it that they find that the most benefit comes from those first five years. So after that, it doesn't really pay to be taking the Lupron. The risks don't, uh, the rewards don't outweigh the risks. So five years. Now I'm about three years in, I only have two years left. So the conversation between my gynecologist, my oncologist and I is, is it beneficial for me to just remove the ovaries? So I can stop taking the Lupron, which will hopefully lead to some sort of better quality of life, meaning that my bones might not hurt. I might not feel like I'm 85 years old although I might, there's no guarantee. 
uh, because obviously removing the ovaries will keep me in menopause. Um, is it worth it to just stop taking the shot? And also, is there a chance that when I am done taking the Lupron in five years, I'll be 48 years old, is it possible that I could come out of menopause and then have to go through it again? Now let me tell you something about menopause, <laughs> okay? Nobody wants to go through it one time, forget two times. I think I've been through enough in my life. So <laughs> I went to the doctor. I recently got a new gynecologist and I said to her, look, I really want to make an educated decision here. I don't want to just flippantly say, hey, take my ovaries. So let's make an educated decision, which she is helping me do. She sent me for a bunch of tests, including bone density, genetics, um, blood tests, all sorts of different things. And so far, I'm very lucky to say that my genetic testing has come back all clear. And we did um, a pelvic sonogram. So we checked my ovaries, my uterus, my fallopian tube. Yes, I only have one tube, I'll explain. Um, and everything looked really good, everything looked good for the most part, let me back up for a second. Everything looked good. My endometrial lining was a little bit um, on the thick side, so we ended up doing a biopsy on that, just as a precaution, but it came back fine, and it is a side effect of the tamoxifen that that happens at times. So, we just wanted to make sure everything was okay. If it was not okay, God forbid, I'm knocking wood, um, we would have had a further discussion about possible hysterectomy, but I do not have to go that route right now. So again, I'm just knocking wood, you guys. You can't knock enough wood. Um, so I only have one tube. Let's talk about that for one second. I had an ectopic pregnancy back, um, I don't know, many, many years ago, and I lost one of my fallopian tubes. And this was a consideration for me because actually some ovarian cancers start in the fallopian tubes. And I wanted to learn more about that, that if I only had one tube, would that reduce my risk of ovarian cancer? So my doctor and I had a long talk about it, and it turns out that only about 10 to 15 percent of cancers from the ovaries that are on the ovaries come from the fallopian tube. So for me, it wasn't enough of a reason to not remove my ovaries. So that was one thing that we put aside. And the other thing is for me is that it would give me a little bit of peace of mind. Even though, like I said, I'm not in any higher risk than the rest of the population to get ovarian cancer. I also wasn't any higher risk to get breast cancer, and here I am, right? So the difference between the two is that obviously the rates of breast cancer are much higher than ovarian cancer, so the chances of, of getting breast cancer for women in their lifetime is one in eight, and ovarian cancer is like one in 60 something. So the, the numbers are much different. However, ovarian cancer is usually found in stage three or four, where breast cancers are often find, found much earlier. So. Um, when I'm hearing these statistics, when I'm understanding the numbers and the odds and the chances, and I'm using my own personal experience um, to make decisions, I've decided that I'm going to remove them. And I will tell you that it's not an easy decision. And they called me the other day to schedule the surgery and I had a freak out moment. And I said, you know what, I'll call you next week. I'm really not ready to talk about it just yet. Because the truth is I don't want to do it. I don't... Um, it's very hard for me to say at 46 years old that I'm gonna remove another part of me that is attached to my femininity and my womanhood um, after losing my breasts. Even though nobody sees ovaries and I'm done having children, <laughs> um, there is something about it that makes me feel very sad. And there's something about it that makes me feel extremely empowered to take control of my own health and my own body. So. I think I talk about this in every single video that I make, but about the conflicting emotions existing at the same time, and this is no different. It's feeling very sad and feeling very empowered and relieved at the same time that a doctor heard me and agreed with me that yes, it's time for you to remove the ovaries. It will hopefully help you. Now, there are downsides to it, of course. Um, being in menopause so early is not great for your bones. So I did have a bone density test in which I do have some osteopenia, which is the, the sort of gray area between normal bones and osteoporosis, sort of that area where um, there is some breakdown of the bones. So I need to be careful. I do need to take some supplements and I will continue working out and I need to probably add some weight training uh, or more weight training into my repertoire at the gym. Um, 
and these are all things to consider you know I, I do feel a little bit like being in early menopause or being put in early menopause has aged me a little before my time I people tell me they don't see it but I can see it I see a difference in things like my hair being drier or my face being more just a little more wrinkled or a little more saggy skin um, there there are changes that I have seen over the last four years now granted I have been under a lot of stress I had cancer but um, definitely there's there's changes in the body I know a lot of women talk about vaginal dryness um, trouble with sex um, <laughs> my gynecologist has says to me well I have solutions for that but also you know you should have a good partner so <laughs> maybe that's some good advice for you guys out there I don't know I'm single so I can verify but um, the truth is that um, it's a big change in a woman's life it's a big change in her body it's a big change in her mind in her emotions and how she feels in her skin even women that I know that are about my age that are going through perimenopause or menopause without cancer without medication anything like that are definitely struggling it's something that we as a society don't talk enough about I don't believe um, because it's really hard it's really hard on the mind it's hard to age it's hard to feel done with your fertility even if you don't want to have any more children so um, I'm going through all of those emotions right now I'm processing it and I will schedule my surgery soon and I just wanted to openly share with you the the conversations and the thoughts that I'm f and feelings that I'm having around it because I'm sure if I'm going through it somebody else is going through it too if you guys have more questions about this please post below again I'm not a doctor I can't answer any medical questions I can't tell you whether you should or you shouldn't do something but I can share my experience with you so that you can feel not so alone and know that these decisions are very very hard ones and um, you know to just be kind to each other because you never really know what's going on with somebody behind the scenes and um, you know, I just want to be able to create community and support you guys and, and be supported. So I appreciate you following along in the journey. And if you have any questions, post below. I will be sure to answer them for you. I wish you good health. Thank you for joining me today.